mailbag time, and it actually harkens back to the conversation that we were having earlier. And if you saw on Twitter... I'm a little worried about this, okay. though, because I already used all my refrigerator cleaning knowledge okay. in the last episode. <laughs> so depending well, we on have, what... We have so a new just, one. <laughs> just so listeners know, I don't check the mailbag. I just get them sprung on me is kind of the system we're going with, and they apparently, based on our first one, don't pertain to anything, so we'll... <laughs> We'll see what hey, you're bringing we just, with. What the mailbag brings us, the mailbag brings us. A uh, reminder, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Chances are very good if you email. We will respond because there aren't a lot of emails coming in. Uh, but this time we actually do have a Star Wars related one. It comes from wow. uh, Jimmy in St. Louis. And he asks, is it wise or stupid for Johnson to address his critics via specifically Twitter? Now, what I gave you earlier was all interviews that he did over in, in, in the course of the last couple of days. And this was great. I don't know if you saw this. He was getting heat over, over some of the decisions that he made. And he had like pictures, like there's a picture where he turned around and looked at his bookcase. And then there was a closer picture, and it was basically the Star Wars book. And then he opened it, and then there was another picture specifically talking about some of the things that Luke did. And I thought it was really funny, but I think what the emailer is asking here, is it wise or is it unwise? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's probably good PR for Johnson. I think it gives him a lot of attention, it keeps his name in the news, it gets people talking. I don't think he really cares, to be honest. Well, I if... know he doesn't care about a lot of things. Well, but... well yeah, yes and no. I mean, I, I think... If you're a celebrity, which neither of us are by any means, and you put yourself on Twitter, you're kind of putting yourself out there and that's going to open you up to people who are going to say terrible things to you just to say terrible things to you because you're faceless and on the internet. So I applaud anyone that's willing to take that on. I don't think I could handle that if I was someone in his position because it would just be too much to have to deal with all the time, but he seems comfortable with it. More power to him. I don't think it's going to hurt his career unless he has some type of terrible meltdown, but if Mel Gibson can star in movies that are still coming out now, then I don't think anything Ryan Johnson says on Twitter will be that bad. I do think, think it can be a slippery slope, though, because what do you answer? Who do you answer to? You can't be sitting on Twitter all the time. Is your management team the ones actually replying on Twitter? I, I see the pros and I see the cons, but I don't think it's going to hurt him in the long run. Just a real quick thing. You said that we're not celebrities. Little do you know, it's my plan to start um, a podcast based on Riddell football helmets and their recording face masks, and that's going to be my ticket to the top. So you say that we're not celebrities now, but you just wait because someday well, that idea is going to... I just found out there's a 100-episode podcast about fingerprints. So if they can make that, I bet you can make 100 episodes about the different NFL face mask patterns and... You and someone else will listen to it, I'm sure. We will see. Now, let's talk about our next topic. This is Ambush. And this is the first episode that we get from the Clone Wars cartoon. Obviously, in the last episode, we discussed the the Clone Wars movie. But this is the first episode of the cartoon. And so the, the motto of this show, because each Clone Wars episode is going to start with a little saying in the blue font. And for Ambush, episode one... Great leaders inspire greatness in others. Now, this episode was directed by Dave Bullock, written by Steve Melching. Ambush is the first episode, as we discussed. The story follows the efforts of Yoda and Asajj Ventress and their attempts to sway King Katunko of Toydaria toward their cause in the Clone Wars. Nitzel, what did you like about Ambush? This had absolutely great clone character building. Yes. Which is something I think this show really needs. We need to care about the clones. They can't just be fodder. They have to be characters we can get invested in. And this show was fantastic. So basically, it's Yoda is trying, and Asajj are both trying to get this king to support them in the war. And basically, they make a deal that Ventress's troops are going to attack Yoda, and whoever wins, that's who the Toydarians are going to support. And the Toydarians are what Watto is. Those flying, hopefully non-racial stereotypes. There's a lot of battling in this. It's basically a battalion of battle droids versus three clone troopers and Yoda. So we learn a lot about these three clones. They even have they have names. It's uh, Rise, Jack, and Thir are the names of them. They have different ranks and they have different personalities. It's not just that they have different haircuts and styles that we see, but they are different characters. One is fearful. One is loyal to the bone. One is just constantly worrying about weapons. They really delve into who these people are, and it makes you 
care about them. You're invested in them. There's a moment where one of them trips and you think they're about to die and another one goes to save them. And he's kind of like, no, leave me behind. It really made them real people where in the movies, other than Cody, who kind of has personality, they just are exactly the same. Yeah, and I this brings up a, kind of like a like a like a side point to that, and it really made me like Yoda's leadership. You know, the theme of that we get in the blue writing at the beginning is about leadership and about a good leader. And Yoda sits down in this hut with them at the worst possible moment when it looks like they have no chance and they're all going to die. And their attitude, the clones are basically like Yoda, leave us. Just go. Like, yep. we can take them. And Yoda stops and makes each one of them feel special. Almost like calling out to us, like, these clones actually matter. Um, and so I th just thought, that that was my favorite part, is the theme of leadership. And you, you in a world so devoid of leadership right now, uh, it was nice to go back and look at, a granted, a fictional character, but one that we all kind of love, if you're a Star Wars fan, showing really good leadership qualities. Yeah, and the other thing I liked about Yoda in this, because if you know me... I am a stark supporter of flippy Yoda battles. Yeah. I think the fight in Attack of the Clones is amazing. You can email me and tell me I suck, but you suck. It was awesome, and everyone loved it at the time, and I still love it now. He has multiple fight sequences in here because it's basically a giant battle until they end up beating Asa uh, Ventress and winning the Toydarian's allegiance. But he has a specific one where they come upon him, and he jumps down, and he just starts meditating, and the droids don't know what to do, and then they all fire at him. And he kind of snaps out of that and runs at him, ignites the lightsaber, is jumping around. He runs under one of those tanks that they have in Phantom Menace and cuts a hole in it and jumps in it and, and clears the place out. Some really, really fun fight sequences in there. More fun than the ones in the movie. And that was one of the few things I praised the movie on was that I thought the fight sequences are good. And I thought this one was even better. Uh, one of the other things that I liked is the animation is already better than it was three months prior with the movie that came out. The animation is tighter and crisper, and the the colors are better, and it's just a better animated episode than the than the movie was, which which struck me as odd, but it made me excited for the future. What do you think about the animation? Oh, it's it's a step up. You can tell that they did a better job, which is weird because you think the movie budget would have been enough to cover that. Maybe it all went to Sam Jackson's three lines. I don't know. <laughs> But it is an improvement, and I have a feeling as we move on through this series, it's going to continue to get better. But this was a this was a real step up, and I was happy to see that. It, they moved more fluidly, which was nice, because there were some clunky moments in the movie previous to this that you just couldn't, you couldn't separate yourself. You knew you were watching someone make a mistake on their computer, basically. Last time we talked about my adoration for the Ventress and she's back and I won't go back and rehash my ideas of that. But one thing that I did notice, just a little bit thing, the last good piece that I want to talk about is if you notice the sun is setting throughout the entire bit of this movie. So it starts kind of high in the sky and it gets oranger and oranger and oranger in the field. It's just a nice little thing that that I noticed and it made me really like uh, what I think is a great episode. They do well with colors and I noticed that in the movie as well. Their color choices are really stark and they, they accent the scenes and they make a lot of choices that sometimes can be subtle and sometimes can be really overt. I think last episode I talked about using dark lighting and then having bright lightsabers. They, they really have made some great choices that make, make the animation stand out a little, even in the movie when it's faulty. The, the color choices are really good. I would agree. You, you talked about faulty. We're going to move on to the bad now. First thing that I want to talk about is King Natungo happens to be a Toydarian. And again, this is my idea of, of you know, I want a new race of people. The nice part is that he's not a, a stereotype like Wado is. So I appreciated that, but um, I, I kind of want something new. And for the t first two episodes, I'm get, or the the movie and the first episode, I'm getting old stuff. So I didn't I didn't like that. The droid jokes again. That's a problem that I'm going to have throughout the course of this movie. I just just get used to it. I'm sorry. And I like them. Yeah. I think they fit and they're fine. <laughs> Here's one, one problem that I had that, that kind of upset me is the Republic is always outnumbered. In the original trilogy, it made sense that the Rebellion is always outnumbered. But then here, it seems like we're always getting into situations where the Republic feels like the little guy. And that's just not what the case was in, in that situation. And then, But wasn't it, wasn't it though? Because I thought in the movies, the Dooku aligns a bunch of different planets that are army-based planets where the Republic just relies on their Jedi. And that's why they're forced to commission the clones and they don't have as many clones as the battle droids that all these other kind of warring planets have. And I think in this episode, 
they give you the numbers. They say something, I think, that they have 100 droids for every one clone trooper. And it, it makes sense to me because a droid, you could be continually manufacturing a droid where clones, you have to grow and age and train. So you, you would think you'd be able to pump out droids significantly quicker than you would be able to pump out clones. That's a fair point. I never, honestly, I've never even thought about that. And so um, I stand corrected. I'll, look, I'll, I'll think about that. Point! Night so. I know. It's the first one that you've gotten since we've been doing this, so I want you to enjoy it. Uh, finally, Touchdown, yeah. Diggs! <laughs> again, that's the first point that you've got since I've known you as far as the Vikings. Good luck. Again, more, this is, again, a common critique that I'm going to have. I feel like it's, I put it down ocularly oppressive land battles between the super battle droids and the clones just the continual shots fired and it it doesn't build any tension it's just chaos it's like a it's like a kindergartner with with a bunch of blocks that are built and they're just knocking stuff down and i want to see more tension in the battle scenes and that's something i haven't gotten you know i think this episode one of my when i first watched this episode one of my thoughts on this one was that yoda was a bad choice to be the jedi in this because yoda is too powerful we know he's going to live through this whole thing we knew in the final he, he confronts ventress at the end and you never for a moment think that ventress could beat him and she never comes close to but that's really not the point of the episode. The point of the episode is about leadership and all these things. And the thing that I would praise it for in these these land battles is that I cared about what could happen to those three clones. And I thought they could die. Where in the movie, the only characters you really care about are, uh, you know, Ahsoka, Anakin, and Obi-Wan. And you know that none of them are dying. Maybe Rex a little bit. And if you had not seen the movie, maybe, or had not known more about it, you you maybe would have thought Rex would die, but Rex is never really in peril in that movie. So this was the first time they actually had people in peril that I cared about that I thought could possibly die. So I will credit them for that. I do agree that they put a lot of noise and blaster fire in there, which can be a little distracting. Very good. Any other thoughts that you have? About the, what did you think overall? So thumbs I, up, thumbs down? What do you think? I, it's weird for me to rank this one because I think this is a good episode I don't understand why this was the first episode of the series. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, it was part, or a, a two-episode premiere. This was the first episode, and then the second episode that we'll talk about on the next show was immediately after this one. But I found this a really weird choice. You don't have any of the main characters from the movie in this. The only returning characters is Dooku has some lines... Yoda and Ventress. There's no Anakin. There's no uh, Obi-Wan. There's no Ahsoka. There's no Padme. There's no talk of the larger universe. This is a really small, self-contained story. And I would have thought to launch a show that's going to span the entire galaxy and be this massive battle, you'd have something that built the world a little bit more and that also strengthened the enemy a little bit more. Because this is a, basically another competition episode, the two sides competing, and they make Ventress really, really weak in this. She fumbles basically at every step. She's outsmarted by the Jedi. You're, there's never any doubt that Yoda's going to win in this competition. And to start a series like that is odd choice to me. I thought you would have wanted to start it with a big villain who's big and powerful and gaining the upper hand and you're throwing the heroes into peril. And that just didn't happen here. And I thought it's a, a weird choice. So if this episode was episode 10, you'd probably have nothing but praise for me. But I think it's a weird choice for the first episode. Do you?